So again, just speaks to the quality of VGC that we've got lined up. And our first match is going to be, first of all, we've got Ezekiel Bustamente, who is last year World Cup of VGC Top 16, 2021 mm. World Cup of VGC Top 16, this year Top 4, looking to push it to Top 2. Also, on a more individual note, uh, Buenos Aires Special Event Top 8 in 2018. So a very accomplished player, both in teams and by himself. And we've got a very interesting team from his end here. Yeah, exactly. The first thing that we are all uh, watching, both have, I'm, I'm guessing, is that Weezing. Of course, we have seen Weezing perform quite well, uh, more and more, with, uh, of course, that neutralizing gas, making sure that no abilities can be used at that point. And it's very interesting to have that with Ogre Pond, because Ogre Pond uh, with Mo Breaker is able to, of course, hit things like Heatran with its Ivy Cudgel. But on the other hand, when it has activated its Terra, uh, and it has gone on its attack boost. When you're switching Weezing in, you still maintain that attack boost. So uh, really a solid choice here next to that Weezing there. I think worth noting if anyone uh, watching has played in metagames with Zacian, for example, Weezing, when it switches back out again, if Ogrepon is on the field and has to rastalize, it will get another one of those attack boosts. And Pokemon with Protosynthesis and Quark Drive as their abilities are unaffected by neutralizing gas. Those abilities aren't shut off. So Ezekiel's I mean, wheezing here going to be more likely to be shutting off abilities on the opposing team than their own. The Iron Hands, the Fluttermane, the Roaring Moon going to be immune to that neutralizing gas. Urshifu losing its Unseen Fist. Not fantastic, but Ezekiel's going to be in control of when that's turned on and off. So again, he really has the advantage with that wheezing. And a lot of this matchup, I think, may come down to how well that Weezing is positioned, obviously depending on what Hiroto's team is. Exactly, as uh, yeah, as you said, those Paradox Pokemon. Iron Hands never even had to use his ability as of yet, but that, <laughs> but uh, not even having to showcase it right now. Roaring Moon, of course, uh, with the Tailwind set, quite popular right now as well. So very much looking forward. What he's up against, it is against, of course, Hiroto Hayasaki, which in 2023 was a uh, Japanese, uh, Japan national competitor as was uh, as they were in uh, 2022 and in the 2022 VR January Series 12 in the channel got their top eight there and he's four times ranked battle season first place in Sword and Shield and honestly I think that's very impressive because I was not good at Sword and Shield. <laughs> A real ladder warrior so to speak that's a lot of time commitment obviously a lot of practice going into the game a lot of people will say oh it's ladder what does it count for but You've got to be good to top the ladder, and you've got to be good to top the ladder that many times and that consistently. You've got to be very dedicated to the game as well, so clearly Absolutely. someone who's put a lot of time, a lot of practice into VGC. And this team, a little bit similar to the previous one, we've got an Ogapon here as well, we've got an Urshifu on this team as well, but both of them different forms to on the previous team, whereas Ezekiel had the Hearth Flame Mask Ogapon, we've got the Wellspring Mask Ogapon on Hiroto's team and the rapid strike form Urshifu on Ezekiel is being faced up against this single strike form Urshifu on Hiroto's team. Yeah, exactly. It's, as you said, a little bit different, a little same, a little different, you know. Uh, but Cresselia Ursaluna, something that has been used quite a lot in the beginning of the format, but now uh, it is one of those combos that is still nice to have quite a bit of a surprise because we have so many tail uh, with the tailwind teams that we have been seeing a lot with the tornadoes and even with the roaring moon but now Cresselia trying to negate that a bit with the trick room there just making sure that all the slower pokemon such as iron hands and ursula can definitely uh enjoy a bit more uh of uh being the fastest on the field there yeah interestingly though i think that mode is going to be a little bit tricky for Hiroto to pilot because of the wheezing of the Roaring Moon yep. in particular. Roaring Moon has knockoff into Cresselia, which does super effective damage. Knocking off Ursaluna's Flame Orb, obviously a big problem for it because it loses that Guts boost. Or even worse, wheezing, turning off that Guts ability. If Ursaluna is burned, instead of its attack being multiplied by 1.5, its attack is halved by that burn. So really that reducing that damage output if wheezing is on the field in front of Ursaluna. Honestly, that is a very good point. I absolutely forgot Weezing, of course, being able to uh, control what will, what ability will be used and what will not. As we do have the leads here, we have Ogre Pong Water and we have Fluttermane on the other side. As we have the Weezing next to Roaring Moon activating its neutralizing gas, making sure that new abilities can be used. But thanks to the Protosynthesis and the Booster Energy, this Roaring Moon speed will still be heightened. It's Weezing not really making much of an impact as it initially hits the field. 
the Ogre Pond doesn't need its water absorbability here, and the Fluttermane, its ability obviously cannot get turned off by that wheezing, but it is still threatening the Ogre Pond with super effective sludge bombs here, and it's resistant to the fairy moves that this Fluttermane is going to want to start throwing out maybe towards the Roaring Moon. So even though its neutralizing gas is not doing much, the threat of Will-O-Wisp and Sludge Bomb is a real issue here, I think, for Hiroto, and he's going to have to try and deal with this wheezing as quickly as possible before it can just start disrupting his entire game plan. Yeah, and that's the thing, of course, when you're playing Flood Main, it is also a Choice Picks variant where you have to choose what option you will go for. Will they Terra? Will they not? As we do have the Terra activation from Hiroto's side, it is that Water Ogre Pump just with the Wellspring Mask just activating, making sure that this IV Kajo might be doing a bit more damage or even just to resist any sort of sludge bomb as the Roaring Moon is just going for a protect. Trying to scout out what this Flutterman is going for as it is the Dazzling Gleam coming out, making sure that it stays safe. Dazzling Gleam coming out, not doing too much to Weezing, and again, Weezing with its big physical defense, not going to worry too much about this IV Cudgel. You'll notice the uh, Ogre Pond here did not get that special defense boost. Big damage coming out. But what do we see from the Weezing is the big question. If it's a Will-O-Wisp here, potentially, then it could be a problem. That Citrus Berry going off, keeping Weezing nice and healthy. And it is just a Sludge Bomb. So good trustalization from Hiroto to get out of that Poison Weakness. But without the special defense boost, that's still quite a bit of damage going down into that Ogre Pond. Yep. Exactly, and now you're being put in a position where the Weezing, of course, is already quite lower. Uh, the Pokemon that is there to kind of negate any sort of abilities being used. You can switch it out, you can try and protect right now. But you don't want this Roaring Moon to be the only one uh, taking all of these attacks now, of course, as the Ogre Pond, when you terrestrialize into that Poison type, the Ivy Culture will still hurt quite a bit, as on the other hand, if you don't terrestrialize, this Dazzling Gleam will surely make sure that this Roaring Moon will no longer be on the field. Interestingly, there is also the play where we've got the Tailwind on Roaring Moon, which it looks like we're about to see. So potentially there was a play where you could go Tailwind with Roaring Moon and go for a Will-O-Wisp into the Ogre Pond if you're feeling lucky to try and get a burn down on it. But instead we see the Protect come out from Weezing. Dazzling Gleam from Fluttermay with the Choice Specs. Four times super effective on the Dark Dragon typing of Roaring Moon is going to take it out. A clean one-hit knockout here. Weezing going to protect itself from, I would guess, an incoming Ivy Cudgel. Yep, so Weezing lives to fight another day with the Tailwind up. But that Roaring Moon down early, and now three turns of Tailwind for Ezekiel to make the most of, and then no more Tailwind after that. Yep, exactly. So now really having to decide what to do in these turns. Weezing now, of course, having the possibility, as you mentioned, to will with this Ogre Pond. But are you really willing to make sure that this... Uh, like it is kind of a, uh, a hard thing to uh, see because Ogre Pond has been run bulky, has been run quite offensive, uh, and now without a special defense boost, this Moon Blast from uh, this potential Fluttermane from Ezekiel's side might actually be able to uh, put the Ogre Pond in range for a KO there. But uh, it's just a hard call to make, really. But yeah, as you said, those three Tailwind turns, you have to use them effectively right now because you can't set them up again, as we do have the Terra activate from Ezekiel's side. You see this Terra Fairy come out on the Flutter main here, boosting the damage of its Dazzling Gleam and its Moonblast. And as you said, without the special defense boost on Ogre Pond, it's not going to enjoy taking this. So Ezekiel deciding the best way to make use of this Tailwind is to get that Flutter main in position, start throwing out big attacks. You see the Spiky Shield coming out from the Ogre Pond, obviously scared of a potential double up here, but we're still going to take a lot of damage on this Fluttermane on Hiroto's side from this Dazzling Gleam. Is it enough? It looks like enough for a two shot there, and this Dazzling Gleam coming back in return, not doing too much damage, but we do see here that the Fluttermane on Hiroto's side is faster than Weezing, even with that Tailwind up, so maybe something to consider, if not for this game, then for next game for Hiroto, that's something he can maybe take advantage of. Yeah, it is as you said. I think that the Weezing is able to survive one more Dazzling Gleam if I looked at it uh, right. But uh, you're still in a uh, quite a uh, predicament because, of course, that Weezing is going to get lower and lower every time it Dazzling Gleams. You don't want the Weezing to be gone completely for what might be in the back, as, for example, it could be that Ursaluna or anything like anything else, really, <laughs> that you don't want to give that ability back. Uh, another Dazzling Gleam will make sure that this Flood Main on Hiruto site might go down here. But you still have the Ogre Pond itself, and we haven't quite seen how much this Dazzling Gleam does, but looking at the damage that the Sludge Bomb did, this might be a KO as the Fluttermane on Hiroto's side is switching out, opting to go to the Cresselia this time around. 
It's the extra cello coming in. There are no fairy resistances on Hiroto's team, which is why this threat of Terra Fairy Dazzling Gleam is so scary. And this double up into the Oakmon is going to take it out here without that special defense boost. So now there's a bit of a conundrum for Hiroto. You'd think it's either going to be Iron Hands or Cresselia in the back here. Uh, sorry, Ursaluna in the back here. Uh, you don't want to bring your Fluttermane back in because that's just going to take another Dazzling Gleam and that's going to get KO'd by that. You can bring in your Iron Hands and maybe go for a Fake Out into the Fluttermane. But then there's a Taunt facing down the Cresselia to stop it setting up Trick Room. And it is going to be that Ursaluna. So with Weezing on the field, like we mentioned earlier, that Ursaluna's damage is really reduced if it gets that Flame Body... Uh, sorry, if that Flame Orb goes off and burns it. So, it'll be interesting to see how Ezekiel plays this with the Weezing. The Taunt threat onto Cresselia is also very, very strong here in order to try and stop it from setting up that Trick Room. But at the same time, you don't really want to take an Earthquake from this Ursaluna. So you've got to pick your targets wisely if you're Ezekiel here. Yeah, this is quite uh, a hard call to make here. Uh, there's a, a few options that you can go for. You can just go for the double up onto the Cressela. You can just go for the taunt uh, with the Taunt and the Dazzling Gleam there, uh, expecting the Ursaluna to just protect there. But you don't want Trick Room to be set up as the Ooh, Helping Hand actually the helping coming hand out coming here. Out from Hiroto. That's a it big is. play there, the Helping Hand coming out, maybe predicting a taunt from the Weezing and thinking, I'm going to get ahead of this and just get a Helping Hand off. And we see the Dazzling Gleam coming out from the Fluttermane again. A lot of damage down on both of these. Worth noting Ooh. that Cresselia's Levitate ability is turned off by Weezing's Neutralizing Gas, so it is going to go down to this Earthquake from its partner Pokemon. And that is enough to take down the Fluttermane. That's big for Ezekiel, whose Fluttermane was threatening KOs on the Fluttermane in the back and also on this Ursaluna. But that's a lot of damage down on the Ursa Luna still. The Cresselia goes down on Hiroto's side, and now it is a 2v2. But that Tailwind is gone, so we'll have to see who's in the back for Hiroto to try and deal with this Fluttermane. Yep, as we do see on Ezekiel's side, it is that Iron Hands being able to come in. We already know that Hiroto's Fluttermane is still in the back, uh, still being able to deal a lot of damage here. We have seen Dazzling do quite a bit. Uh, a Dazzling Gleam won't be able to kill the Iron Hands from this range, but uh, you don't want to really be... It, hit, being hit by a Moonblast either way will hurt quite a bit as well, as the Weezing uh, being, not being really being able to do a lot of damage here, uh, to put a lot of damage onto the Ursaluna, and potentially kill the Fluttermane from this range, but uh, looking at the most Fluttermanes, I highly doubt it. Yeah, it's, it's a tricky situation here, because if Hiroto goes for the Protect here on Ursaluna and can take out the Weezing. Then in this 2v1 situation, the Ursaluna Iron Hands combination will probably win. But Hiroto can't safely go for an attack with the Ursaluna and deal super effective damage into that Iron Hands without hitting his own uh, Fluttermane for a lot of damage. We do see the Moonblast coming out into the Weezing. Weezing fainting this turn. And I believe we saw the Drain Punch going into the Protect here of the Ursaluna. And so that looks like a very strong turn for Hiroto, keeping the threat of Moonblast and Earthquake on the field here. Yep, and now with Guts being back on, to, back on deck here, being, making sure that this facade or, well, Earthquake uh, wouldn't really click that with the Fluttermane next to you. But this facade will do quite a bit of damage together with the Fluttermane, who is locked into that Moonblast, of course. Uh, Iron Hands, I've seen it survive many things, but a double up from these two, I don't think it is very much possible as we have the Drain Punch into the Arsenal, trying to get as much HP back as possible. It, uh, just to make sure that it can take potentially another Moonblast there, but it is... I quite think that's going to be enough. Yeah, it's not going to be enough. Uh, there, the Arsenal are not enough of a help pack, unfortunately. Yeah, I think this, this Moonblast is going to be able to take out the Iron Hands here. I think in that previous turn, it would have been good to see uh, Ezekiel go after uh, the Fluttermane from Hiroto there. Because if Fluttermane goes after the Iron Hands, um, then you're not taking that much damage from the Ursaluna. Because the Neutralizing Gas is still in effect, and so it doesn't yeah. have that Flame Orb. Uh, benefiting it, it's actually uh, hindering its attack stat there. So maybe if you go after the Fluttermane, you're not that worried about the Ursaluna in that case. Or, yeah. if the Fluttermane goes after the Weezing, you can take out the Fluttermane. Iron Hands will live one Earthquake from from a an Ursaluna, and mm -hmm. possibly also a Facade, depending on how it's built, because it would still be... S oh, we no, it wouldn't be Iron spread Hands. damage. Yeah, it, it would be, be spread, spread damage. damage, yeah. Ah, so maybe it wouldn't. 
Yeah, so we've I think seen it, Iron it, Hands survive a lot of things. It is very possible. Like I've seen Iron Hands do some crazy things, really. <laughs> yeah, a, a guts boost in Ursa Luna Earthquake is maybe a step too far. So yeah. I think that was just a call on Ezekiel's side there. If he gets the protect correct, um, then that's a win for him. He got it incorrect, and so we move on to game two with Hiroto, a game up, and that wheezing. We saw the impact that can have getting rid of that special defense boost on the Terra Ogapon, getting rid of the Levitate on the Cresselia to make it weak to that Earthquake, getting rid of the Guts on Ursaluna, but not quite enough to pull Ezekiel over the line. Let's see what adjustments these trainers make in game two, and we're going to see that hard trick from lead come out in this game with the Iron Hands Cresselia lead from Hiroto, and same lead of Weezing and Roaring Moon from Ezekiel. Yeah, this uh, this is quite a good lead uh, for Hiroto if he wants to ensure to put up that Trick Room. On the other hand, the Roaring Moon being able to knock off this Cressella will do quite a bit of damage. Uh, so having to choose your target carefully here, who to fake out, as knockoff will do a lot of damage, probably will not kill the Cressella, but uh, you don't want the Weezing to be able to taunt the Cressella either. So be, I can see definitely a fake out plus Trick Room coming out. Uh, into that wheezing with the fake out, but Roaring Moon is then free to go for a potential knockoff or even a breaking side, as we do have the fake out onto the wheezing and just a knockoff onto the Cressella, doing a little bit over half there as the Rocky Helmet does damage the Roaring Moon. As now the Cressella going last, uh, potentially is definitely going for that Trick Room there, as we see it's being set up right now. Yeah, Trick Room goes up there. Iron Hands now in a very strong spot for the most part, uh, threatening that Roaring Moon with maybe a Drain Punch. It's worth noting this Cresselia is not running Psychic. It only has Ice Beam as an attacking move, so it doesn't have that super effective damage into Weezing or a potential Terra Poison on the Roaring Moon. So we will see if Weezing can maybe stall out these Trick Room turns. You don't want to give Ursaluna a free switch, and you want to keep your Weezing alive so that it can neutralize the Ursaluna's damage through that Guts. And we're yeah. going to see a Protect come out from the Roaring Moon. Just trying to stall out some Trick Room here. We see the Wild Charge calling the Protect, getting that damage down on Weezing. A lot of damage, just under half now. The Citrus Berry going to activate, giving Weezing a little bit of health back here. But good targeting from by Hiroto. I am expecting an Ice Beam to go to that slot as well. But we see the Taunt come out from the Weezing into Cresselia, stopping maybe a Lunar Blessing or something like that if it wants to try and get a burn onto Iron Hands. We do see the Lunar Blessing coming out, stopped by that Taunt, which means that will wisp into this Iron Hands is now a relatively safe play, getting that burn down without the threat of Cresselia, just stopping it from uh, getting that burn on it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, something that people might have been expecting was a will wisp into the Iron Hands, but just making sure that to shut down the uh, Cresselia first with the Lunar Blessing, making sure that that burn can potentially stick for a few turns as well. Uh, and now, of course, with the Ronin Moon just protecting, just making sure that it didn't get Drain Punched while this uh, Iron Hands went, might have gone for that Roaring Moon. Now it has potential to just go for that Terra, just go for anything really like the knockoff onto the Cressella, making sure that this Cressella is gone as soon as possible for the Trick Room and for the Room again, as we have Ezekiel going for the Terra on its Roaring Moon, becoming a beautiful Poison type there with a skull on top of it. Yeah, that Poison type meaning that it's no longer weak to the Drain Punch that could be coming out from this Iron Hands. Those switches from either player, we do see the Drain Punch coming out, Roaring Moon taking that very well with that new Resistance. Interesting to see where Ezekiel targets here. Do you double down the crest and try and take it out, or do you go for the Willows into the Iron Hands? We see that burn now going to be halving Iron Hands' damage output, dealing a little bit of damage to it over time. That threat effectively neutralized for now, unless Cresselia can later in the game get off one of those dangerous Lunar Blessings. Instead, we just see the Ice Beam coming out into the Roaring Moon. No freeze and a good bit of damage from a knockoff in return, putting Cresselia into the red now at threat of being knocked out, which would remove the threat of Trick Room from Hiroto's side. Similar to how we saw in the last game, we saw Ezekiel get that Tailwind up early, and then Hiroto had to fight to stay alive until the end of the Tailwind in order to win the game. It's looking like a similar game plan from Ezekiel, but with the speed reversed, trying to get to the end of this Trick Room without giving Hiroto too much mileage, get rid of the Trick Room setter, and then speed control is in Ezekiel's favor. Yeah, as Ezekiel just went with the same lead as he uh, did before, but now proving way more effective with the we this wheezing onto the field. Wild Charge going into the Roaring Moon, 
still not a kill as the sludge bomb will be taking care of this Cressela, knocking it out, making sure that it cannot Lunar Blessing anymore as a knockoff into the Iron Hands, making sure that the yes, Iron Hands uh, is losing his cool vest there, uh, potentially for any special attackers in the back to do a bit more damage. Not only is it getting rid of that damage reduction into special attackers, it's also it's judging Iron Hands' fashion statements there. Roy Moon saying, <laughs> I don't like your vest, I think it looks a little bit ugly, I'm going to get rid of that. We, uh, there's no need for this. <laughs> we see uh, the Ursa Luna coming in now. Interestingly, Ursa Luna, with the Weezing on the field, is strongest on this first turn. Because once that Guts, uh, sorry, once that Flame Orb activates, that Guts boost is not going to exist because of the Weezing. So this is a slightly tricky situation. Ezekiel maybe just playing to stall a turn here. We see the Iron Hands switch out from Hiroto's side. That Burned Iron Hands not really threatening any damage on anything here. Instead, Hiroto opting to get that Ogapon in, offering that follow me support for, for the next turns. And what are we going to see from the Ursa Luna? We see a double protect here from Ezekiel, again just stalling out that first turn of Ursa Luna being on the field, making sure it gets that burn down on it. So it's not really dealing any damage. Earthquake comes out here, can do a little bit of damage to this Ogapon on Hiroto's side, and not much else. Well, yeah, if you have to do something, hurt your own Pokemon. I... <laughs> but now with the Trick Room over, this means that this Roaring Moon is to being the fastest Pokemon on the field. This Weezing is still threatening uh, with a potential Sludge Bomb as well onto this Ogre Pump right now. Uh, of course, Hiroto still has the potential to go for any sort of um, a Terra there with make, trying to make sure that it's no longer weak to any Poison type moves. But it is a bit awkward still. This Weezing really putting in a lot of work this time around for Ezekiel. Yeah, the Weezing, again, like I said, shutting down this Ursa Luna is the big thing. So Hiroto has to now play a game where he's trying to get this Weezing gone as soon as possible. But with the breaking swipe on this Roaring Moon, that's going to be easier said than done. We see the Spiky Shield coming out from Hiroto here. We'll see if that's enough damage on the Roaring Moon to take it out as the breaking swipe comes out into Ursa Luna here, dropping its attack even further it's burned it's at minus one this is not doing very much damage here even with super effective attacks roaring moon does go down though which is interesting no tailwind coming out from ezekiel which could maybe give the wheezing the drop on the ogapon for a potential will -O -Wisp. and no attack drops on the ogapon as well very importantly but we will have to see who is coming in in the back from ezekiel yeah, there's Ursa Luna turning a bit to the side here, making sure that this Weezing is about to get hit by this Earthquake. It is, of course, uh, doing... Uh, it's not gonna do that much oh, damage. Oh, whoa! <laughs> I did not expect that little damage. I was still expecting some damage, uh, but wow, that is amazing to see how an Ursa Luna that is burned, he absolutely do no damage with a super effective move as well. Yeah, that is, that is crazy low damage for an Ursa Luna. And now Ezekiel has to make a choice here. Do you want to take out this Ursa Luna as soon as possible in order to make sure that it's not a threat after the Weezing goes down? Or do you want to maybe bring in your Fluttermane, try and go for a big Moonblast into this Ogre Pond, get rid of that as soon as possible so that you can keep your Weezing alive? It's an interesting decision still to be made here for Ezekiel. I think he's got an advantageous position. It's a case of now, how does he capitalize on this? Worth noting as well that uh, Ogre Pond's water absorbability is shut off by Weezing here. So it can go for Follow Me if it would like. It's no longer going to be immune to that. So it will just be taking a Surging Strike and probably a Sludge Bomb for its troubles. Yeah, uh, this is of course the, a very awkward position because you can follow me. You are still four times resisting that uh, Surging Strike from the Urshifu in that case. But then the Weezing with the Sludge Bomb will do quite a bit of damage there. And with a Burnt Iron Hands and technically a Burnt... Uh, uh, with a Burnt... Uh, Moon bear uh, <laughs> with a <laughs> Ursa Luna would have uh, burnt Ursa Luna on the field, not doing all that much damage as we saw on to the Weezing. I'm not really seeing a lot of options for Hiroto. Being the options are being taken away bit by bit thanks to this Weezing, really. Yeah, it's very interesting to say that a uh, burn on an Ursa Luna is a bad thing here. We're gonna see the terrestrialization come up from Hiroto again. We'll see if it's that same overfront terrestrialization. It is. Doesn't get the special defense boost again because of that Weezing, but hopefully for Hiroto, this gives this IV cudgel enough damage to knock the Weezing out. As we see close combat coming into the Ursa Luna, taking it out. So Weezing's ability now, the neutralizing gas, not really as important anymore. We see the crit, the critical hit from that close combat into Ursa Luna. Not sure that made that much difference. The super effective 120 base power move, always going to be doing a lot of damage here. The Ivy Cudgel coming out from the Ogre Pond is going to take out the Weezing here. 
But it feels like it's a little bit too little, a little bit too late for Hiroto, potentially. It feels like the damage has been done, the Ursuline taken down, but with the fake out in the back on this Iron Hands, there's still a threat. Because the fake out is guaranteed into Urshifu, it's choice scarfed. Fluttermane mm -hmm. is also choice specs here. So neither of these Pokemon can defend themselves from an attack from Hiroto. So maybe we'll see potentially a fake out into the Urshifu and an Ivy Cudgel. Probably going to take out this Fluttermane with the Terrestrialization from Hiroto. So this game definitely still up in the air. It's There, there are options. There are definitely options here, yeah. Uh, because, yeah. yeah, it's just as you said, because fake out into the Urshifu, making sure that... Uh, it can close combat in either of these Pokemon, and Ivy Cudgel into Fluttermane can. I'm pretty sure it will go down there, uh, making it a two v one versus this Urshu. For this Urshu, then trying to kill the Overpon, I believe, uh, and then. But it's just to burn Iron Hands there. But Iron Hands has done crazy things. So at the same time, the close combat is also dropping his defenses. I forgot about that. So this is gonna still hurt quite a bit if he goes for a close combat. As we have the fake up into the Yoshifu, Moonblast into the Ogre Pond there. Ogre Pond going for the Ivy Cudgel onto that Fluttermane, making sure that this uh, Fluttermane will Moonblast no more. <gasps> but it survived! <laughs> and we see how this Ezekiel has trained his Fluttermane clearly with a lot of emphasis on that physical defense stat. And that may be the big difference maker in this matchup here. That's a huge survival from the Terra Water Ivy Cudgel from Ogapon. And now the threat of that Moonblast into the Iron Hands is gonna knock it out here, I think. Close combat yeah. may well also knock out this Ogapon. We saw the special defense boost from that, uh, from its ability as it terrestrializes, saving it a little bit of damage uh, from the Fluttermane, but still probably enough to put it in range of this Urshifu close combat but does it survive this turn it doesn't it goes down and the Moonblast is going to come out into this iron hands and that is going to wrap up the game for ezekiel that very very clutch 4 hp survival on the flutter main showing us how important it is how you train your pokemon this flutter main clearly being given a lot of bulk in its training and that has paid off in dividends in this end game I'm at a loss for words, really. I did not believe. I, I refused to believe that the Fluttermane was going to survive. But seeing it survive, I... Oh my god, that was amazing to see. Eze like, as you said, it's the way you train your Pokemon and that you have made your team. And Ezekiel knew. It's like, uh, might have known or thinking, like, this is a rule. I could survive here still. But that was amazing to see, really. I, uh, I'm i honestly flabbergasted, impressed. And I just want to uh, get into game three and see what Ezekiel will do differently. I don't believe Hiroto will lead with the uh, Iron Hands plus Cresselia again because of that Weezing and might adapt a bit again to this. Possibly. I think, though, the Weezing did do a lot of work in that game in slowing down the Ursula Luna. That taunt again into the Cresselia also very valuable. But at the same time, that end game was still a little bit dicey. It felt like Ezekiel was on top of things for most of the game. And even so, uh, Hiroto managed to get into a position where a little bit more damage on that Ivy Cudgel or maybe a critical hit from yep. that move, which we know has that increased critical hit rate. One in eight times there, you're going to land a critical hit. That still would have tipped the game in Hiroto's favor there. So I think it'll be interesting to see if Ezekiel does make any adjustments. It's been the same three there with the Weezing, Roaring Moon, and Fluttermane. I believe it was the Iron Hands we saw from Ezekiel in the first game. Urshifu in the second game doing a lot of work for him. We see the same lead from Ezekiel, that Roaring Moon wheezing. Again, hey, if it works. If it, it works. <laughs> it worked last time. Will it work this time? That Fluttermane still obviously being a big threat into the Roaring Moon. And we see Fluttermane and Ogre Pond from Herota's side. A very common lead that we see quite a bit in this metagame where the Ogre Pond will lead with Fluttermane. Fluttermane will throw out big choice specs boosted attacks. And Ogre Pond will say, it's okay, don't worry. I've got you covered, and it'll use Follow Me to keep any fire away from the Fluttermane so it continue to throw out that big damage. Yep, exactly. It is the uh, These are the same leagues as Game 1 right now. So let's see how these players actually adapt here as we have 
a Terra activation immediately again. Uh, but this time from Ezekiel's side, is Roaring Moon going for that Terra Poison, trying to make sure if he rode the Ghost for a Dazzling Gleam again, this, uh, this Roaring Moon will survive and will be able to put up Tailwind, do a bit of damage or anything really. As Hiroto has a death as well, going for that spiky shield there. Yeah, Spike Shield from Hiroto, protect from the wheezing on Ezekiel's side. Both players thinking, hmm, don't really want to take any damage here, and we'll see no damage coming out from this Roaring Moon, actually dealing damage to itself uh, as it hits that Spiky Shield and the immunity from Fluttermane's Fairy Typing, meaning it takes no damage from that Breaking Swipe, fires off a soft Dazzling Gleam into that Poison-type Roaring Moon. And now, I think that's a strong first turn for... Ezekiel potentially as he doesn't take any damage this uh, Fluttermane is now choice locked into that dazzling gleam not really doing any damage or very much damage anyway to the two poison types in front of it maybe forced to switch out and this Ogapon having already used its spiky shield last turn a bit of a target now for Hiroto uh, sorry for Ezekiel to hit on Hiroto's side we'll have to see how much leverage uh, how much mileage Hiroto can get out of this Ogapon this turn yeah, as we do have a switch out here, as you said, the Fluttermane seeing it's not doing all that much damage with these two poison types. Going into that Cresselia slot there, as we have the Terra onto the Ogre Pond yet again, trying to deal as much damage as possible and also trying to make sure that no Sludge Bomb will be hitting it super effectively. Uh, but uh, that is, of course, one of the things that a Weezing can do quite well, as we have the knockoff into the uh, Cresselia as well. And that one doing a bit under half this time. So we saw last game it did a little bit over half. That's maybe interesting for is equal to note here. Maybe Sludge Bomb Knockoff doesn't pick up the Cresselia this time. We see the Ivy Control come out. Weezing going to survive that with its big physical defense. Citrus Berry going to heal it back up again to a little under three quarters of its health. And it'll be interesting to see now what move comes out from the Weezing. And it is the Will-O-Wisp. So the Terrestrialization for Hiroto this time not paying off. Doesn't need a to get rid of that weakness to Sludge Bomb because Ezekiel has just gone for the Willows. And now that big damage that Hiroto was terrestrializing this Ogre Pond for in the previous game is completely mitigated by the burn. And there are options now for this reason to shut off the Lunar Blessing as we saw last game. So no options for Hiroto to go for a potential Lunar Blessing to get rid of that burn on the Ogre Pond. This is likely to stick for a while and this Ogre Pond has been really badly nerfed now by this burn yeah it is as you said uh losing a bit of its attacks as it is the offensive powers of hiroto suddenly going down quite a bit as now uh, this royal moon is going for that tailwind as we have seen that this wheezing has spawned on uh on deck for this Cressella, making sure that this Cressella will no longer be able to heal this ogre pond Let's see what this Cressella yet still trying to go for that Lunar Blessing, trying to heal its teammate there. Unfortunately, being completely shut down there and only Ice Beam really being the option that this Cressella can do right now. Yeah, it's a super smart turn from Ezekiel there, realizing this other one's not really a threat with the burn on it. The only way it stops being a threat is if Cressella can get a Lunar Blessing. The only way to stop the Cressella hitting Lunar Blessing is if my Weezing is faster. So the way to do that is to get Tailwind and then you can taunt the Cressella. Ogapon going for the spiky shield there, Hiroto maybe hoping that Ezekiel would go for a breaking swipe or something along those lines instead. Just targeting down the Cresselia, the spiky shield not really doing anything that turn. Cresselia switching out again into the iron hands now, scared of maybe that double up, the taunt meaning it's not doing very much. We get rid of the assault vest on the iron hands and now this sludge bomb from Weezing gonna do just a little bit more damage. Potentially a poison, which we don't get. Ivy cudgel coming out from the burned Ogapon. We'll see how much damage this does to the roaring moon. Still a pretty Ooh. significant chunk of damage from that terrestrialized Ogre Pond. Obviously, the terrestrialization giving it that extra damage on its water-type attacks, but not enough to pick up the Roaring Moon thanks to that burn from Weezing. Yep. And now this Weezing still being on the field, Iron Hands have the potential to fake out something for one turn, trying to stall out that Tailwind that the, uh, Ezekiel still has been put up here. But still kind of an awkward position because there's two more turns of Tailwind and after that initial fake out where Ezekiel can potentially play both his Pokemon, he, he do have the option to just willow his yet again to try to make sure that this Iron Hands does no damage either. So I'm trying to see here uh, what kind of things Hiroto can make here, but it seems to be quite hard here. 
make the decisions here as he wrote to actually opting to switch out here making sure that he can keep his iron for a bit later and Otomi comes in yet again it's a very smart player like that from Hiroto um thinking okay the obvious play from Hiroto there is to fake out into one of these two Pokemon, the other one probably going to want to try and reduce the attack stat of that Iron Hands, either with a Breaking Swipe or with a Will-O-Wisp. And so Hurt is saying, okay, Flutterman's immune to the Breaking Swipe, doesn't really care about being burned by Will-O-Wisp, I'll bring this in now and start setting myself up into a nice offensive position. Taking out that Roaring Moon as well, but the flip side of that now is Ezekiel has a free switch in and still one more turn of Tailwind up. And this Flutterman, uh, sorry, Hiroto has already used his Terrestrialization, so can't increase the damage of this Fluttermane, can't remove the Shadow Ball weakness against a potential back-end Fluttermane from Ezekiel's side. So still a lot of pressure being exerted from Ezekiel here, and again that Weezing doing so much work with the Will-O-Wisp into the Ogre Pond, really lowering its damage output, a little bit of chip damage on it as well over time. The burn on Fluttermane as well, although it doesn't yeah. neutralize its attack stat quite as well, still a lot of chip damage, the taunt on Cresselia putting in a lot of work. This Weezing is being a real problem for Hiroto here. We see the Fluttermane come in, uh, so Ezekiel here trying to use that one extra turn of Tailwind to get a bit of damage down. There's the threat of Follow Me here from Ogapon on Hiroto's side, so it's maybe not completely safe to go for the Shadow Ball, but still threatening big damage made with a Dazzling Gleam. This Fluttermane doesn't really want to lock into a Shadow Ball, potentially, given that there might be an Urshifu in the back. A lot of decisions to be made here. We do see the Follow Me coming out from Hiroto's Ogre Pond, not wanting his Fluttermane to take a Shadow Ball, but we do just see the Dazzling Gleam coming out from Ezekiel. Big damage down into both of these Pokemon. Shadow Ball comes out from Hiroto's side and will be knocking out that opposing Fluttermane from Ezekiel. And we're going to see the Sludge Bomb probably coming out from Weezing just to take out that Ogre Pond, getting rid of that threat of the follow me and so now Hiroto has the opportunity to bring in either Cresselia or Iron Hands from the back that fake out pressure now gonna be a real problem into the Urshifu that I think we've seen in the back end from Ezekiel here no more Tailwind but the choice card for Urshifu is still gonna be outspeeding everything here threatening that Fluttermane and because the Fluttermane is locked into Shadow Ball it probably isn't gonna be able to take out that Urshifu in one shot so still a lot of pressure on Hiroto here do you switch out that Fluttermane, try and reset for a position where you can get a, uh, a Fairy-type move coming out? Or do you just take the damage on the Urshifu and say, okay, I trust in Cresselia and Iron Hands to be able to finish this game off? A little thought being put into this by Hiroto, trying to figure out what his best line is into this, trying to figure out what Ezekiel maybe has in the back end. We've seen both Iron Hands and Urshifu uh, in Ezekiel's fourth slot in this set, and depending on which of those comes in, it does change what Hiroto wants to go for here. That Urshifu is going to be revealed now though from Ezekiel and Hiroto is going to bring in the Cresselia. So this Fluttermane is now under a lot of threat and Cresselia can't do very much damage to the Urshifu thanks to the lack of Psychic. So this is a tricky situation I think for Hiroto. If that Iron Hands had come in maybe it'd be a little bit different, get some damage down on the Urshifu but instead this is looking like a free hit into this Fluttermane with the Choice Scarf Urshifu. Yep, exactly. Choice Guard Rush Food still being able to uh, do quite a bit of damage. This Cresselia also losing its Rocky Helmet earlier in the game thanks to the knockoff from that Roaring Boon as well. So this Urshifu still has the potential to do quite a bit of damage here as the Cresselia is actually just opting to switch out here into the Iron Hands, going for that potential for the uh, fake out block there. As the Surgery strikes into that Fluttermane, we'll make sure that this Fluttermane will do no damage no more. That's a really nice play, I think, from Hiroto. It lets him reposition so he has Iron Hands on the field on its first turn in front of these two Pokemon with the Cresselia coming in now. So there's the threat of maybe a fake out into Weezing and a Trick Room, which puts this Iron Hands in a very good position to start dealing big damage to Urshifu. So maybe the line Hiroto goes for here is he can fake out the Weezing, get that guaranteed Trick Room up, assuming the Surging Strikes doesn't KO the, Urshif uh, the Cresselia from this range, which I don't think it will. And then maybe a Helping Hand Wild Charge could take out the Urshifu from here. Ooh, that is also interesting. That is interesting to see. Because you do have the potential to make a bit of a riskier play here. Because uh, the obvious thing would try and taunt to Cresselia, maybe for the, uh, for the Trick Room 
but then you have the urge for going for on the offensive here with the surging strikes. You have seen a lot of Iron Hands being a bit more uh, offensive as well with a little bit more speed invested. But with this Trick Room si uh, uh, side as well on Hiroto, I it's hard to say what they will go for as we just do have the fake out onto the Weezing make uh, the hero to believing that this Pokemon will be able to take these Surge Strikes as they seemingly seem to do quite well. No Mystic Water on this Urshifu, just a choice curve uh, showcasing that this Iron Hands is still able to hang on and now this Cressella can do what it's meant to do and go for that beautiful Trick Room here making sure this Iron Hands is the first to move in the next turn. Yeah, Cresselia does go for that Trick Room. I think helping out Wild Charge is going to KO the Urshifu here, but very good play from Ezekiel to get damage down that Iron Hands, because now potentially the Wild Charge means that the recoil damage will take the Iron Hands out as it knocks out that Urshifu, making it a 1v1 with Cresselia and Weezing. With Cresselia, as we said earlier, not got that Psychic coverage on it, only the Ice Beam. That gives Weezing a chance to try and take it out here. Yeah, exactly. Uh... It is interesting because because we have seen Cressella being slowed down the Weezing at all times, but that was always with the Weezing in Tailwind here. So I'm trying to think if the potential is there to maybe go for a Lunar Blessing here if the uh, if of course the Iron Hands is able to survive this Wild Charge as it is able to survive here. Uh, but the Weezing actually being slower than the Cressella, Sludge Bombing into that Cressella, yeah. poisoning it. But this Cressella uh, is now free to go for a Lunar Blessing potentially, but just go for the, the Ice Beam breathing into the Weezing. Whoa! <laughs> okay, so uh, with the poison, this is nice, but now this uh, Iron Hands is just able to uh, wild charge yet again, as this Cressella has potential to go for a potential uh, Lunar Blessing as well. So, uh, a bit of a predicament here for uh, the Ezekiel here. What to do here? Uh, Hiroto turning it around quite well with the uh, last minute Trick Room there. Just The problem here though is... Weezing will probably survive a wild charge here and the recoil will knock out the iron hands So if yeah. Cresselia goes for a Luna blessing here and Weezing goes for taunt then it's game over but if Cresselia yeah. attacks and Weezing goes for taunt then uh, Hiroto will win but if Cresselia attacks and Weezing goes for a protect here stalls out one more turn Then oh. Oh, we just see the helping hand coming out. This I think is the guaranteed line for Hiroto. Weezing does go for the protect But that's only gonna save it for one turn there is going to be another tick of poison damage going down onto this Cresselia here. So Do you go for the double? Do you go for the double here? <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> yeah, that Cresselia's oh. in range of a tick of poison. So oh, this is close. Oh, okay, so... If Cresselia if goes for the, for the helping hand here and Weezing gets the double protect, then I think Ezekiel will take it. But if Cresselia goes for the attack here or the Lunar Blessing, and the uh, Wild Charge doesn't pick up the Weezing, then I think this game is Ezekiel's. This is such a tough call to make. If you're Hiroto, do you go for the play that only loses the Double Protect and say, I'll take the win two-thirds of the time? Or do you try and call Ezekiel going for that play and saying, regardless of whether or not you get the Double Protect, I'm going to win if I get this Lunar Blessing off. And we it do see the Helping hand. hand come out, calling no attempt at the Double Protect there. Wild Charge, probably will it be enough to take out this Weezing? It is. it is enough. And wow. on the final turn, Hiroto manages to clutch that out. One more turn of poison would have been enough to take out that Cresselia. The Iron Hands is going to go down to that recoil. That could not have been any closer. That was an amazing match to see.